So, this is Ippo Station, Ippo train station, where I've just arrived. It's a classic looking old station from the British colonial times. Not sure where I'm gonna stay in this town. I was here about 11 years ago, last time, and I stayed probably about one hour and just had a very quick look around the center where most of the older buildings are. But I think there's a bit more to this town, so I'm gonna have a wander around and stay a night this time. Good morning from Ipo, Malaysia. Had a bit of a rough sleep last night in the old hotel. There's a few old hotels around here. I'm kind of in the back of the town and I'm gonna show you this really cool restaurant where I just had breakfast. Let's have a really nice restaurant here. Well, they were cooking chapatis this morning, but they're finished now. This is what 70 ringgit gets you in Ipo, Malaysia, in a hotel room. Toilets down there. And kettle, a few cups, flat screen TV, aircon, some windows. Windows. You don't always get windows in Malaysia, which is quite odd. Double bed, it wasn't too bad. A couple of towels, mirror and a shower but no toilet in the room it's a little bit odd huh but okay not a bad price but not the cheapest in the region i can say let's have a look downstairs here but it was a clean place the only problem they put these things that people in the west put in the toilets to make it not smell too bad the things people put in urinals to keep the smell from being too nasty. They put them in the, under the bed and in the corners of the room, which really smells bad. And I just couldn't get the smell out all night. I had to wake up at 3 a.m. and open the windows and it still had that smell. It gave me a headache. Anyway, time to check out. Let's do a little bit of walking around and I'll show you some of the very cool old buildings this place could be like the next Georgetown Penang or the next Malacca if it was 
cleaned up a bit more, renovated a bit more. It has so much potential. It's a really cool place. Really, very cool place. So many old shop houses. I love these kinds of buildings. This street seems to be the main street that heads down to the train station. Down here last night there was really good Chinese food. It's like an outdoor food market with many restaurants along the side and I definitely recommend it very much. Good prices too. Really yummy Chinese food. And what's the name of the street? Maybe you can see it from here. Looks like it says Jalan Tahil Azar, maybe. Okay, let's continue on down. So at the moment, I'm on the side of the old town, across the river, on the opposite side from the train station. I mean, when you go from the train station into the main part of the old town, but then you get about halfway through and you cross the river. And there's a few blocks over here that are very pretty. As you can see, we're just going to have a sample of it. Okay, let's run for our lives. Don't have to run for our lives. Oh, they've stopped for us. Isn't that nice? And what can I say about the drivers in Malaysia? Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, some are quite polite, of, but definitely some people are impatient and drive at you a little bit when you're trying to cross the street. The worst ones are the ones who drive very slowly Maybe they're looking at you or something else and when then you think you can then you think you can cross the street and you start and then suddenly they seem like they don't want you to to go in front of them. They suddenly speed up when you're halfway across the street. Then you have a choice of run in front of them, which will be fine, but not comfortable. Walk in front of them, which means you have to hope they stop. It's usually what I do, but it depends on the vibe I'm getting. Yeah, or you can stop in the middle of the street, which is not really a good idea, because then you're gonna get cars from both directions buzzing past you and you're kind of stuck there. This is a back lane and it's got lots of lovely street art. So we can see Ippo is following the trend that took off in Georgetown, Penang, street art trend, which has spread to Malacca also, and a little bit in KL. It's a really cool trend. It makes a little back lane like this one behind the shops into a really cool place. And a quiet way to get to wherever you're going. Let's have a quick look along the side here. There's this really nice old house here and a really great mosque i love this mosque
So I'm actually ooh, hello. I'm actually carrying everything that I'm traveling with here. Just a small day pack, everything packed in there and doing it the old school way. Actually a long time ago when I started backpacking I did the full size backpack thing. Had the biggest backpack I could buy. Had it packed like as tight as possible. Everything rolled up and packed in there. And it was very heavy with a full size guitar and a hard guitar case. Very, very heavy. But over the years I've learned gradually to carry less and less. But I still have the original backpack that I started with many, many years ago. And I still use it. And I still have, I guess, a bit more than I want in there. But for this trip, I've just taken my day pack. Because I've left the big pack in a safe place somewhere. So now we're coming to the riverside. I don't know what this river is called, actually. Really nice. This is the street we were walking on before. Yeah, so next time I go to Europe. For sure, I'll have to take the big backpack and everything I own can fit into the big backpack. That's my world there. And mainly it's the problem with too many clothes. So you might see in my videos, I wear the same clothes a lot. That's because I'm trying to wear them out. It's just easy to get clothes, to have too many, you know? I don't try to get them, but sometimes people give you shirts, things like that. I mean, it's sometimes you have to buy things, you think you're going to be in a place for a longer time, and then you change your plan, and then you suddenly think, wait a minute, <laughs> how am I going to fit this all in my backpack? But the old school way, of course, is carry everything and walk a lot. I've been doing the backpacking thing long before we had internet. When I started out there were some early guidebooks but I didn't use them for a long time. So when I started out I had no guidebooks, no internet, just would feel lucky when I could get a paper map somewhere from a tourist information place or a hotel. This is some kind of cool funky restaurant which I stumbled through last night in the dark trying to find my way. It looked pretty spooky last night, I can tell you. It's a weird place. It's like a cafe restaurant. Yeah, so everything's a lot easier now with the internet, apps, many more guidebooks, videos online like this one, which can just give people tips about places and how to do things. Really, like everything you want to learn how to do, pretty much it's online now. It's not always the best way to learn, of course, but it does give you a good start. If you want to learn how to fly a 747 or build a nuclear bomb, chances are on YouTube or somewhere online, you're gonna find something that will help get you started at least. 
okay now we've crossed the river and through this weird little cafe place and uh, this is where I walked last night looking around for a room last night I did an old school style as well I just walked around looking for a room but I I did cheat a bit I had an app on my phone with some places marked out and I walked around and checked a few and it really helps of course it helps a lot in the past I would ask people or just walk and look around in the past I always had a tent and a sleeping mattress sleeping bag and if I had to I would sleep outside but uh, okay that's great in the Americas uh, North America or Europe I mean USA Canada the West um, but it's a bit hot in Southeast Asia for that or some other parts of the world so and the rooms are so cheap in this part of the world there's really no reason to be sleeping outside unless you're like really in a bad situation so you can see this town is a real normal kind of place where people work and live and do just normal stuff and it's not like all set up for tourism although it does have quite a few uh, hotels and a few old guest houses and a few backpackers and that's a big change in the last 10 or so years that people have started to open hostels copying western style before it was mostly about guest houses and hotels guest houses were usually rooms with no bathroom inside shared bathroom very cheap very nice very homestay kind of style not so many of those anymore in Asia it's quite sad young people have taken over and converted a lot of the guest houses into hostels but hostel actually ends up costing more money you might get aircon and sleep in a dorm but you're paying the same price that you used to pay for a single fan room so for me it's not a good trade-off I would have to say let's go down one more block here <laughs> wheelie bins are a good idea I'd love to see them spread around the world would help to keep the number of rats down in a lot of places can't say I've seen any rats here though so far so that's cool Here's a really cool place, Sinhalese Bar. Local old gents hanging out in here. trading interesting to think about how the world connects how things link up that's the street there on the left goes back to the bridge we crossed okay let's head down here
Muslim call to prayer. The mosque minaret, the main mosque of Ippo. And we're just coming up on the left here to a lane that's very photogenic. I think it's called Courtesan Lane. I'm pretty sure. I guess it's the place to find yourself a courtesan. If you're looking for such a thing. It could be very handy. Perhaps. This is one of the most popular lanes in the city. Places like this with the old tables and chairs. Hello. Love the old screens, the old bamboo cane screens. There was a hostel here for actors. Let's look at the inner workings here. Have a sneak peek. Behind the scenes glimpse there. All right. Looks like a cool place. Ceiling fans. Ceiling fans and old tables. That's what I like. Old chairs. And young woman here walking along. Just need a cold drink. Plenty to look at around here. Lots of life. A mix of locals and people from other parts of Malaysia and a little bit of foreign tourism along here I would say but not too much actually I haven't seen so many foreigners the clock tower from the British colonial times down there Here we are, Ipo Parang. I guess this is a bit like the Madaka or Jerka or whatever, Madaka in uh, KL. It seems like it, it would have been, I guess, a place where the British could have practiced their marching with their soldiers a bit sometimes and had special events and played games of cricket. You see, there's a bunch of old shop houses over there. And the 
this is kind of impressive old building over here. Nice area. It looks like it's going to rain though. There's a lot of British colonial buildings in Ipo as well. It's an interesting looking place. It seems like, I don't know what this building is. It looks like some kind of a, I don't know, like a maybe sport ground or something before. And here comes the rain. We'll get under cover here. The old broken parking garage. Okay, that place I was behind before looked like maybe a stand for some sport ground or something. It was the back of this place. The place where you can get some food and drinks. This is another of the main squares in Ippo. Still raining a bit. If I can just turn the square from here. It's this kind of funky new wave mosque over here. And then this really iconic clock tower. And that building over there is the one I was sheltering next to. And let me grab a chai and chill a bit until the rain completely stops. Well, I just had a nice cup of chai. Nice milky black tea. This goes down from this square down to Cortison Lane. As you go down there, it says that it's a Hippo Heritage Walk as you walk down. So the rain's starting to finish up here. Got my little umbrella. You see in the distance the hills covered in mist. Behind this big white building where I was sheltering next to before, behind there, just back where the hills are, you see there's a white building. That's the train station. I'm gonna head for there and take off to the next place. But it's been great. The pool has been fantastic. Definitely recommend it for anyone. Ciao. Well, I just snuck into one of the old British colonial buildings. I think this was, part of this building was uh, for the um, governing of this province. Uh, but this half of the building looks like it's, it was a theater or some kind of hall, I guess, um, in the old days before cinemas, it would have been a dance hall or some meeting hall. But there's another half to the building. I could not find a way that it connects through. There's some workers downstairs. They didn't see me and I came to the upstairs part. So let's have a quiet look. I have to be quiet when I go back out. I don't want any hassle. Okay, let's have a look. I'm not really supposed to be in here, obviously. Beautiful view of the hills there. And the hills continue around. The Cameron Highlands are somewhere back in there. I think maybe more to the right a little bit. 
it's a great balcony. So if the Queen of England had come here, or I guess the Governor General of Malaysia, they would have maybe stood up here and waved to everybody. But this beautiful old colonial building is really falling apart. Okay, I have to be quiet in here. Pigeon up there. Oh, chandelier. Couple side rooms, I've had a look in there, nothing really interesting. This room's locked over here. I guess this might have been the VIP area. Maybe there was a viewing box in here, I'm not sure. Head down here to the main entrance area and I'll show you inside the main hall. I walked around the building earlier and I was stuck around the side of the back when it was raining and I could see the building is really in bad condition. There's pigeon shit everywhere inside. Sorry, pigeon poop. Wait. Sorry, YouTube. This is the main entrance hall. Portrait of, I guess, the Sultan and his wife. In the old days would have been a portrait maybe of Queen Victoria and her husband, Prince Albert. Here's the main hall. Some workers in there. I'll try it that they don't see me. 